Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I know. Did you see Jeff? All right, for the record, uh, Councilman Shipsa is absent at this point. Personal appeals part one. If you have a personal appeal, please approach the podium, sign in, state your name. Good evening, everyone. Um, Karen Pashevko. How's that? 719 Glenwood Street, Emmaus. Uh, give me a minute here while I sign in. Thank you all for your service to our community. Um, I've been a borough resident for 29 years, and um, I'd like to share some observations. Um, every year my flowers bloom earlier. This year I have daffodils that bloomed in February. My elm tree also bloomed in, in uh, February. My leaves are falling later. Um, I've, exp I've noticed increased temperatures during the summer. I have more days when I have to use my central air conditioner. Uh, we lost three, sto three trees during Hurricane Sandy, and I've also noticed a general increase in severe storms. Um, we've experienced increased incidences of Lyme disease in our neighborhood. So basically, I'm very concerned about climate change. I think my observations um, are not unique. I think we're seeing global temperature changes, and there have been a lot of articles in the, mor in the morning call lately um, coral reef uh, problems. Um, I, I, want to, I want to state very strongly, this is not a political issue. It should not be a political issue. It should be an issue that everybody is concerned about, regardless of your political party. Um, I think the climate change is going to impact every single aspect of our lives. Food availability, um, respiratory health, spread of disease, econo the economic uh, in general, Fresh water, and fresh water, of course, is a topic that all of you folks are thinking about right now with Little Lehigh runoff. And I'm going to have a separate comment about that at the end. It, it's interesting that we encourage our children to excel in math and science, and yet when we see valid scientific data in front of our face, some of the deniers will have you believe that it's not true. And I have some charts and graphs to share with you. This is from uh, NOAA, the National Oceanographic um, Institute, and it shows the relationship between temperature and CO2. And I've seen, this is just from 1880 until 2000, and I've seen charts going back 10,000 years, and the trend is always the same. I'll share this with you. Um, about two weeks ago, I went up to the uh, Natural History Museum in New York, and I attended a seminar, Our Earth's Future, Understanding Climate Science and Sea Level Rise. And one of the presenters there shared a chart, and it's kind of hard to see from far away. But all the little blue dots, that's actually the oceans. And there are probably 4,000 probes that are all over the world in the oceans that are being monitored and are registering data and they all come to the same conclusion. Sea temperatures are rising. This is going to affect us. We need to worry about it. And I will also share this with you. Um, the city of Bethlehem, oh, and I also have this little handout about um, severe weather in the Northeast. I'll give that to you, too. The city of Bethlehem recently passed um, a resolution to reduce their carbon footprint. So this is something that I'm here, this is the, the basis of my talk, is to ask you to consider reducing the carbon footprint of the borough. Now I know money's tight, but in the long run, this could actually save money. In fact, there's a lot of data out there that communities, states that have reduced carbon and increased green technology has actually saved money. So I'm just throwing this out to you for your consideration, I'll be in touch. And one last comment about the Little Lehigh. This was in the newspaper on Sunday. 
And if you look at these dots here, this is all Lehigh Water, Little Lehigh Watershed. And something like 5,465,000 square feet of just big box industrial buildings, not counting the houses. And I'm going to leave you with a quote, with great responsibility, I'm sorry, with great privilege comes great responsibility. I don't mind paying for clean water. I think clean water is extremely important. But if you look at where the growth has been over the past 30 years, how much has Emmaus really grown? Not that much. And I'll just leave you with that thought. And thank you very much for your time. I'm going to finish signing in here if the next person wants to come up. And I'm going to give you my Do we have any other further public appeals? Hearing none, community minute. Thank you. Anybody have a community minute to bring forward? Special presentations, we have none. Um, approval of the council meeting minutes from March 6th. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Councilman Dufresne, seconded by. Councilman Brown, any questions or additions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are six eyes. Decisions on bids. We have um, curb and concrete contractor approved to approve for 2017, and we have our 10th Street culvert replacement project, um, and also the sale of Second Street or Second South Second Street property. I'll turn this over to Shane at this time to f on the uh, bids. Sure. Um, so in your iPads, number one. Uh, is the curb and concrete uh, contractor bid tabulation for the CDBG project. Uh, you'll see uh, AZ Trunzo Incorporated out of Bethlehem uh, was one bid and Zagora Concrete uh, was the other bid. Um, as uh, uh, often is the case, Zagora uh, was the winning bidder by um, well, if you look at the totals of A through Y, his total bid price would be 89105 Trunzo would be uh, 153490 So if you look at the, the gross, although we're not doing that much in project um, uh, project work, but uh, you, you, can, you can see how uh, they submitted their bids. Uh, Zagora uh, would be my recommendation to approve as the curb and concrete Contractor for 2017. All right. Is there, some mo is there a motion to approve Zagura Concrete from Emmaus PA for uh, Councilman Brown? Is there a second? Councilwoman Gilbert, any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are six ayes. All right. Your second one, um, and it, it's exactly what we thought it would be. Um, the 10th Street Culvert uh, bid is in just for the concrete work. Um, you see that's a very large number. Um, the winning bidder, uh, now remember, it, there's not a whole lot of uh, companies out there that make you know, multi-ton uh, concrete culverts. So uh, as a matter of fact, there was only one in Pennsylvania that we, that we were even aware of. So we put it out the bid. Um, the only one that we, we figured would, um, would bid was Contact Engineered Solutions. Bid price for the culvert, uh, for the precast concrete footings, the arch uh, culvert, the head walls, the wing walls, and the accessories. Uh, bid amount is one ninety eight four hundred. So one hundred ninety eight thousand four hundred dollars. My recommendation would be to accept that bid. Is there a motion to approve uh, contact engineered solutions? Councilman Brown, second. Councilwoman Gilbert, any questions or discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, say no. There are six ayes. Now, I just want to remind you that that is just for the concrete. The construction contract uh, bid uh, is going out. Um, our solicitors have negotiated with our engineer for uh, some right of way uh, for, for staging um, with the local property owners. So that's all taken care of. Um, 
but the actual construction contract will probably see about the same price, somewhere in a $200,000 range. Um, our budget, you know, we have the $238,000 for the grant, and then we have another $175,000 already budgeted. Um, so uh, that should that should be right in the, the realm of, of what the project cost will be. Do we still plan on doing some of the work in-house? Yes. So what we did was um, because we... We had a real good feeling of what the, the culvert would cost because, you know, we talked to that company and said, hey, how much would something like this cost? He said somewhere in the realm of 200000 um, It's really kind of an unknown for the construction cost. So what we did with the bid was we did a bunch of alternate bids to do deductions. For example, the finished paving. Um, we could deduct that out and do it ourselves if the cost is extremely high. What you end up finding out is a lot of times um, they'll minimize the alternates to entice you to take take the full the full bid, but uh, you know if this thing it's too costly if the bid's two two hundred and sixty thousand or something like that, we have to really take a close look at all the alternates and see what our department can do. But we met with the engineer, the director of public works, and we looked at everything that our department could do in an efficient manner, um, knowing all the other projects that they're doing. So I think we have like full uh, four alternate bids uh, that'll be within that, that scope of work. Um, Thank you. The next thing is the uh, Second Street property, the South Second Street property. Um, we did not, as expected, we did not receive uh, a bid on it. We did have two interested parties. Um, they felt that they would rather try to negotiate directly, knowing that the law is that you have to put it out to bid twice. Uh, we've done that. Um, so uh, we're now at the point and Mr. Solicitor, I guess I'm going to defer to you. We've bid it publicly twice, no bids. We can now move forward with selling this piece of property directly, correct? You can. Do we have to vote on that? Uh, when you do not have to vote to sell it, but you do have to vote on the contract. I think okay. we enter into, right. you can now enter into public negotiations or private negotiations and uh, if you get a, uh, a, a agreed an amount, that would have to be approved by the board. Right. Okay. So our next step would be a direct sale to whatever entity. For for the record, Councilman Shipster arrived at seven thirteen. I, I would like to say though, if someone is opposed to doing that, going out for a private sale, they could make a motion not to do that. So, I mean, I know our general approach is that we're, because I mean, we've talked about it, is that we would engage a real estate agent, but, so we don't need to make that. Well, I, I think, though, that you, well, I mean, I mean, yeah, I if, if you want to make a formal vote on a real estate agent, I, 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 I guess maybe I, I thought wrong, but I thought Feinberg Real Estate was our agent throughout the process of all the properties. I thought that was the motion a couple of years ago. I'm not. Okay, yeah. So I, I don't remember made that. I, I mean, that's what I'm asking. I yeah. mean, what is what is our process? I mean, we've talked about it previously, but I don't think we've ever. But it, you're saying that we already did that part. Well, I thought you did, but it, it would be okay. safer to if you want to vote. Yeah, in can, I don't, one can now we or um, push it to committee? Can we go to general the general administration committee and discuss it and rec make a recommendation to council? That way, we'll have all the information yeah, absolutely beforehand. Could, okay. could we all have her listing agreement and prices and things like that? That would be helpful. We may not. I think it needs to go to Jen Ed. Yeah, I, I yeah think because so we, we have, may not even we have need other to, options. Yeah, too. We, we may not even need to. Right. Yeah. That, that's kind a, of. Yeah. I mean, I think there's some discussion there. So. Yeah. All right. So that will go to GA then. That completes decision on bids. We have two communications. J.P. Raynock is asking for a reappointment to the Planning Commission. His term expires April 1st of this year. Uh, is there a motion to reappoint J.P. Raynock? Councilman Barrett, seconded by Councilman Anders. Um, is it a four-year term? Okay, so it's a term to expire April 1st of 2021. All right, are there any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. We have uh, William Lahachek, Jr. Uh, 
requesting appointment to the Board of Health and appoint that or uh, assign that to Health Santa. Nope. Are we appointing that? We, um, this Mr. has been Shipster, open for a we, long time. We knew time. Mr. Shipster was going to be uh, uh, late this evening, so and we didn't have a quorum. So I had three council members in the room. I asked them to interview. Uh, so that we didn't waste the gentleman's time being here. Okay. Uh, so we did have three councilmen. It was Mr. Dufresne, it was Mrs. Gilbert, and it was uh, Mr. Anders interviewed this gentleman. So uh, I'll allow them to speak on, on uh, behalf of that interview. Sure. Anybody want to make any comments? Motion to approve? Just, um, or a point, when, rather? When we did interview, um, he was very enthusiastic. He's been a resident here of 20-plus years, and um, he's looking to volunteer for his first um, appointment and um, we believed he was a uh, great candidate and uh, it was a three to zero vote to uh, uh, put the motion out. Okay, so would you like to make the uh, motion to appoint him? Yes. Motion by Councilman Anders, second. Councilwoman Gilbert. Um, this this has been a vacancy for a long time, correct? I mean, we've had people um, on a, a, a quorum, <laughs> but we didn't have a full well, board I, in I a long time. I think this is to replace the removal. Yeah, so we still don't have a full board, right? I, I believe we will after after this. It, it will yeah. be after this, okay. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. I'm sorry, did I say six ayes before? We're good. Seven ayes. Uh, does anybody else have any communications to bring forward for this evening? Borough Engineers report. We have none. Solicitors report. Uh, just a brief executive session to discuss a piece of litigation uh, is requested. All right, thank you. Unfinished business part one, we have ordinance number uh, 1154, an ordinance of the Borough of Emmaus, Lehigh <coughs> County, Pennsylvania, amending chapter 15, subsection 602.2.A of the Emmaus Borough Code, removing a residential handicapped parking sign on the public street located in front of 556 Ridge Street within the Borough of Emmaus. Uh, is there a motion to approve Ordinance 1154? Uh, Councilman Brown, seconded by Councilwoman Gilbert. Any questions or discussion? It's a roll call vote. Councilman Brown? Aye. Councilman Shipsta? Aye. Councilman Anders? Aye. Councilwoman Gilbert? Aye. Councilman Dufresne? Aye. Councilman Barrett? <coughs> aye. Councilman Ladenburg? Aye. There are seven ayes. There's no new business or unfinished business, part two. Items not on the agenda. Anybody have anything to bring forward? Hearing none, merits report. No, I have nothing, Mr. President. Committee reports. Public Works Committee, Chairman Brown. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Nothing for official action tonight. Um, the one thing that I ask the committee members if uh, we can reschedule our April 10th meeting for April 3rd. Uh, just look at your calendar and then give me a, a, uh, an email back when, when you're available. Uh, that's due to uh, scheduling uh, with our public works director uh, possibly being out. Uh, besides that, a report progress. Thank you. Health, Sanitation, and Codes Committee, Chairman Shipsta. Thank you. Uh, one item for official uh, action. <clears throat> the uh, Environmental Advisory Council is looking for us to um, donate uh, the uh, <clears throat> half the proceeds or half of the uh, cover half of their licensing fee for the uh, Earth Day event on April 8th. Um, <clears throat> they've never asked before, but this year they have a, a bill coming, and I know that uh, for their e-recycling and also for their paper shredding and all of the items that they take on the, community, on the Earth Day, um, there's a lot of Emmaus residents who take advantage of that. So they're looking for us to um, chip in or, or donate to that cause uh, a cost of $334. Three thirty-seven fifty, I think. It is. I got, I got, I emailed her, and she gave me that cost back. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I checked on it. Um, so I'll, I'll put that <coughs> in the form of a motion uh, that we uh, help uh, fund the uh, Earth Day event on April eighth uh, for a cost of three hundred thirty-four dollars. There's a motion by Councilman Shipsta. Is there a second? Councilman Anders, any questions or discussion? Councilman Barrett. And, and why was the change? I mean, I'm fully in support of it, but what was the change? A different uh, um, hauler that they used. Okay, so the, yep. the hauler that previously that had, did it always previously donated the services? Yep. Or, okay, so we this this event had no fees essentially previously. It wasn't that they were absorbing Correct. it. Correct. Okay. Yep. So they have, a new, they have a new company that's coming in and do all that. Does the EAC actually have a line item that we budget some funds for them in, every year? I no. I thought we budgeted it's, it's a couple hundred dollars. So, okay. No. 
And uh, where is this funding coming from? Um, Pacific celebration or a community? No, you, no, you keep hitting that. It, it goes over budget every time you keep hitting it. Uh, it's going to be <laughs> the uh, uh, unfunded, ba unfunded balance. Okay. The, um, Contingency? Any other? Oh, Councilman Barrett? Uh, yeah, is, the, yeah, the contingency fund. That's it. Perfect. That's the line item. <laughs> is Upper Milford also? They're going to pay half of that also. Okay, so the, I figured yep. that's where the 50-50 was. We'll get our money's yep. worth. We have boxes <laughs> of paper to shred again. I, I'm not worried at all. It's really for better understanding yeah. uh, of the we, of the process. Yeah, if you were there last year, we took no, I know. a I've massive seen, I mean, truck down there endless. filled with paper yeah. for shredding. Yeah, yeah, look at you smiling. <laughs> it's a good deal. I'm not worried about it. No. And, and, and it's also great for our residents. I know it, at times they can't make it to our... Um, our collection once a month and it gets filled down there I've seen the cars lined up down past the ball fields almost out out to the road and last year I saw th at least three trucks filled I mean there's yeah. everything from refrigerators to washer dryers to I, I have air conditioners to get rid of myself uh, yeah so you know you have these go. things sitting around and you know if you don't get a chance to that it gives you an opportunity you do pay for certain items like those larger items I know an air conditioner I believe is $25 um, but it's getting recycled the proper way. It's not sitting at the curb, so it yep. is a good deal for our residents, and, and um, I'm very supportive of this. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There's seven ayes. And that's the only thing I had for, for official action. Um, you, our notes are from our meeting are uh, in your uh, iPads. The e-recycling had opened um, was that last weekend, right, on last Monday. And uh, we filled a, an entire dumpster, and then some, and then some on the side. So uh, it was very successful, uh, and I think we'll continue to do that. The uh, other thing is the uh, committee will be working on a, um, a blight task force um, ticketing system. We're looking into that. So I think that's going to help us a lot with uh, you know, us writing citations and stuff. It'll, it'll cut out that, that part of it. And uh, our next meeting is scheduled for... April 20th at 4.15, I'll report progress. Thank you. Parks and Recreation Committee, Chairman Anders. Yes, we met March 7th here in Council Chambers. I have two items for the agenda this evening. Um, the first is um, Mr. John Zagora was here and uh, requested from the Emmaus Youth Association if the borough is willing to approve the installation of a memorial bench in the memory of Bobby Fick, who is a longtime baseball fan. Um, he sat on down at the park watching games at, at on a bench in in the area and um he asked he would be willing to pour a concrete um place for it and then the EYA is purchasing the bench and a, a plaque for uh, Mr. Fick um so I put that in the form of a motion to approve the the bench and placement of uh for Mr. Fick at the There's a motion by park. Councilman Anders is there a second? Councilman Barrett, any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. The second item on the agenda um, is Mr. Brett Lennig from the EPE MFA, which is the local football youth group, um, is requesting to um, place a new um, stand that will house food, etc., cetera, for, as a snack stand. Um, this would be over by the football field where they have two buildings. Um, they have their their storage building, and then they also have a um, pavilion. So it would be in the middle of that location. Um, the board voted to approve that, and I'll put that in the form of a motion for council to approve the uh, placement of the pavilion. Um, just a note that EPMFA is building this building themselves. It's not a cost for the borough. All right, there's a motion on the floor by Councilman Anders. Is there a second? Councilman Barrett, any questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. Um, beyond that, we had a, uh, the committee discuss the Boy Scout project, um, and um, that was went to uh, staff. It should be an interesting project. And um, <coughs> lastly, um, while Mr. Zagur was here, he also discussed just the field use with the Amazed Youth Association. 
And with that, I'll report progress. Thank you. Public, Public Safety Committee, Chairwoman Gilbert. Thank you. I have nothing for official action this evening. Our next meeting is scheduled for April 5th at 3 p.m. in Chambers. I'll report progress. Thank you. General Administration Committee, Chairman Barrett. Uh, there's nothing that requires official action. Our next meeting is April 12th at 9 a.m. Thank you. Budget and Finance Committee uh, is myself. We have the bill, bill list to approve for uh, uh, Resolution 2017-11. Is there somebody who would like to make the motion to approve it? So moved. Councilwoman Gilbert, is there a second? Second. Councilman Schipsta, any questions or discussion on the bill list? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. Um, that is it for budget and finance. Our next meeting of March 23rd, which is this Thursday, has been canceled. Um, Community, Community Relations Planning and Development Committee, Chairman Dufresne. Nothing for action here. We did select the volunteer of the year. I believe I emailed it out to everybody who that was. Uh, this person will get a brick in remembrance garden and we will honor them at a future council uh, meeting here. We also had some beginning discuss preliminary discussions on uh, adding different functions and responsibilities to the CRD committee, uh, which we're going to try to start drafting some so we can all take a look at that there to give a little bit more substance to the committee uh, going forward. Other than that, the next meeting is April 13th at 4 o'clock progress. Thank you. Uh, under 17 on your agenda, you have boards and commission meeting minutes, uh, so you can look at those. Personal appeals part two. Anybody have an appeal? Please approach the podium, sign in. Otto Slozer, 121 East Elm Street, Mass. Twice this evening I heard discussed what should be deliberations in a public setting, a public meeting, but it was mentioned that it, the public's business is going to be conducted by email. Just got done saying the, the volunteer of the year, certainly I would think the public has a right to hear that information. Instead, the chairman said it will be sent to every councilman by email. How does that comply with the Sunshine Act? Can we respond on that? Well, I can. It, it's part of the deliberative process, and until it's passed, it's not, it's not a, uh, a public record. It was I'm mentioned being, at a public meeting, though, sir. I, I understand. He said that they have select, they have, I guess you would say that they are going to nominate one, but obviously council will have to approve it. Ultimately, first of all, there were no deliberations yeah. via email. Exactly. What happened was at a public meeting in a yeah. public committee, they voted on it, they decided it. But what they don't want to do is inform the person ahead of time because it's supposed to be a surprise for him. Okay, well, I would suggest that in the future, just you don't. We, we understand that, that but don't mention you, at a public meeting. Then. We, we understand that, but it was a public committee meeting. Thank you. So, just for full clarification, there was no deliberation by email. That's correct. That's correct. correct. That's Zero. Correct. None. Zero. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah, that's what I thought. I didn't even see the email. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an important point to clarify. I guess. Anything else? No. That was public. Oh, yes, thank you. Um, borough manager's report. Uh, the significant revenue and expense items for the first half of March are in your iPads. Uh, if you have any questions on those. Uh, otherwise, I will report progress. Uh, President's business. Uh, I forgot to mention during communications, I received a letter from the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission on the total reconstruction and widening project from milepost A53 to milepost A57, which is um, Lower McCungie Road up to the Lehigh Valley inter interchange. Uh, they're having a meeting to discuss this. 
Monday, April 10th at 10 in the morning at Lower McCungee Township, West Coastville Recreation Center. So this is something that some of our um, um, department heads will be attending. And uh, it's more informational at this point, correct? I believe so, yeah. But that process is moving forward. And uh, at this point, I'll call an executive session for litigation and personnel matters. Will there be any uh, action be taken? Uh, I would reserve the right. We may want to. With possible action there. being taken when we come out? Yes. All right. Uh, executive, <laughs> executive session at 7.30. All right, council's back in session at 7.58. So for the record, we're in executive session to discuss a litigation matter and a uh, real estate purchase matter. Anybody have something to bring forward? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to allow a solicitor to file a petition for allowance of appeal of the Commonwealth Court decision in the PLRB case to the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. There's a motion on the floor by Councilman Dufresne. Is there a second? Councilwoman Gilbert. Questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. There are seven ayes. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Councilwoman Gilbert, seconded by Councilman Anders. All those in favor say aye. 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 Seven ayes. Meeting adjourned at 7.59.